I'm Scott Al Miller, and this is my life living in Leon, Nicaragua. Today I'm going to talk about the magical nature of Nicaragua that makes you 10 foot tall and bulletproof. We're going to explain what we mean and get into some details of things you need to know, both for yourself when you're coming down and suddenly have this euphoric feeling that nothing can possibly go wrong, and how you need to hedge yourself against other people who are having that feeling, all right after the bump. I'm out for a beautiful walk in the Reparto Veracruz today on the west side of Leon. It is a gorgeous afternoon. We are expected to hit 99 degrees Fahrenheit, of course, later this week. But for now, it is super pleasant and really even 99 here because it's relatively dry isn't that bad once you acclimate. So <laughs> how what is this crazy topic that we have today? But I was talking to one of uh, one of my viewers just uh, just last night. And she brought up, I don't want to go into her details, this has nothing to do with her situation, but it, 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 she brought up how she had come down under this uh, delusion or this, this sales approach from someone who had been living here for a little while, I don't know how long, and had put together this grand plan for a business or a dream. Maybe it wasn't designed to make money, I don't know. Uh, but this relatively complex uh, sort of grandiose plan and, and she had sold her on it and was like, yes, you got to come down and join me on this thing and be a part of this, this grand future and we're going to do all this stuff. And then, and then my viewer, she came down and discovered that, that there was no grand plan. There was no big dream. There was nobody doing anything. It was just a sales pitch to get her down. And that doesn't mean that it wasn't legit. Perhaps the person who had come up with it was believing that lots of other people were going to join in. Maybe she believed that there was some magical future. Who knows? But this is a really, really common story here in Nicaragua. Now, we talk all the time about the scams, and that's not what I'm referring to here. Of course, those exist. There's going to be scams. There's going to be people who are out to get you. But to be a scam implies that the person knows what they're doing uh, isn't legit, and they're just out to fleece you of your money. What I'm talking about is very different. It is this thing, and it's going to happen to a lot of you. And I can see it in a lot of discussions that we have that it does happen to a lot of you, or at least, you know, there's a temptation. And of course, I've had this temptation too. So I understand it to a bit, but to a point. But I want to talk about it because if you've not spent time in Nicaragua, you may not see it happening. You may not realize how much it happens. Uh, and it's easy, very easy, to get swept along in other people's excitement about things that don't exist. So we have two aspects of this. One is that when we talk to people in Nicaragua and they talk about businesses that are here, things that have gone on, just the way that life works here, one of the things they say is, you know, you talk to just about anyone, and this does not just mean expats. It does include Nicaraguans, but it definitely is more expats and, and extra and heroes than Nicaraguans. And they'll often have these grand dreams that they tell people about. Oh, I'm, I'm building software that does this thing. I've got a company that makes this product. I'm going to buy all these things and invest in this thing. There's always a big story. Everybody you talk to has a big story of these big things that they're doing and how it's so fancy and so large and so just enormous in scope and, and unique and pushing bounds and doing things they could never have done somewhere else. And you get, you get excited, right? We hear about people who are building new banking systems, people who are building new this, new that. And you hear about it constantly. Oh, this person has a big business that does this thing or that thing. And you're just like, wow, there's all these like wildly successful people with so much knowledge and they're able to do so much. It's really humbling really quickly. And then you talk to anybody about any of these things and they're like, oh yeah, no, that was a story they said 10 years ago and they never made anything. It was just something they made up or maybe they were hopeful, but it's not like really a thing. You know, I had someone a couple of years ago uh, come to me and they're like, oh, we got this great project. We're doing this amazing thing. We're going to do all this stuff, right? And everyone has this story. Everyone has 10 of these stories at minimum. Um, and he was like, yeah, we're going to build this incredible software. We're going to solve this major problem. And it all sounded great. It was, he picked a real problem. He had the, the kind of inklings of a real solution. Um, and then after he did it, he would be like, check this out. Look at the progress we're making. And I'm like, you didn't make any progress. This is like 15 minutes with, with just nothing. Like you opened up a notepad and you sketched some ideas. Where, where's the progress? He's like, this is the thing. I'm like, you do understand this isn't like working software or anything. 
Well, I didn't know how to make software and I didn't want to hire a professional. So I just, I just did something. I'm like, this isn't working software. Like you, you haven't even started. You came up with a problem, right? We need to go to the moon. And then you proposed a propulsion system that will push people to the moon. And then you left it there. You didn't actually design a rocket. You didn't even invent a rocket. You didn't even tell anyone that they needed to invent a rocket. You didn't even identify things for other people to do. You just sketched out on a piece of paper and said, this'll do, and then acted like you did it. Imagine Jules Verne trying to pretend that he actually sent people to the moon rather than writing a book about it. Jules Verne certainly knew it was only a book. He didn't solve how to get people to the moon. He didn't solve how to feed them, how to deal with, with the lack of gravity, how to get them back. He didn't do any of that stuff. He just came up with the idea that being on the moon would be cool, right? But if Jules Verne lived in, in Jules Verne, lived in Nicaragua today and was probably from North America, but not necessarily, we get this from all over, he would totally be going around telling all of his friends that he was managing a, a space exploration company and had solved all the tough problems and had a working system. And when they asked to see this working system, then they think they're going to find a launch pad. They just find a sketch. And he'd be like, what? Isn't that enough? And they're like, no, you actually have to put people in something and go somewhere. He'd be like, what? No. What? What? That's what it's like for real. And so you end up with this never ending situation where you're constantly bombarded by people who are really excitedly telling you about their hopes and dreams and projects and what they plan to do for money and how it's going to be wildly successful and they've already put so much into it and there's so much interest in it and all these kinds of things. And it's really easy to one, just fall for people's bluster and be like, whoa, they're so impressive. And then you find out potentially years later that none of it was real uh, or uh, to, to really badly, you know, you fall for it and be like, I'm so excited. I want to invest in this. And that can be absolutely tragic because then you it's easy to overlook that they had no business plan, had no funding, didn't know how to do the thing they were doing. That's a huge one. So often it's people who are like, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to do this really complicated thing. And I work in a space where, you know, I'm a business consultant and I build software and I start companies and we're often like, wow, I would never have guessed that this person had the engineering chops to make software, uh, which is often the thing that they're doing. And then, and then come to find out they had no idea how to even hire. So they didn't know what software was. They didn't know what an app was. And so they, they were just saying words and they had kind of an idea. Yep. They identified a problem. They identified something that would be interesting if somehow it was making money, whatever, if they really could do it cheaply. Um, but a lot of times you'll find people are trying to solve problems that don't even exist, right? A lot of, there's a lot of people trying to solve like housing problems, but they're, you know, if you listen to a lot of sales pitches, oh, we're going to find a way to get, get houses below $40,000. And you're like, well, that sounds good to someone who hasn't been here ever, but if you've been here, you know that there's houses that are under $20,000, brand new, everywhere. Every community's got them. They're literally everywhere. There's a whole bunch of really cute Dalmatians over there and a little puppy barking at me. Aww. Uh, so it's like trying to solve problems that don't exist. So it doesn't matter if you can pull it off or not because there's nothing to solve, right? <laughs> like there's already houses can be built super fast. Houses are already existing super cheap. It's so like, that's not a problem that anyone needs to solve, but you'll, you, there's so many companies out there that are like, we're going to, you know, do this thing that's completely unnecessary. Do they know it's unnecessary? I don't know. No one does any research. They don't know if the, like all these pieces. So the thing that's, uh, that I think it's worth internalizing is that there is something, and I don't know what it is, but there's something about coming to Nicaragua that emboldens so many people to think that they've identified problems. And, and keep in mind, it's, it's almost always, not always, almost always foreigners, which means the chances that we actually know what real problems exist is very low. If it's a problem for foreigners, if we're like, okay, okay, all of the foreigners want traditional Tex-Mex food and not real Mexican, and no one here knows what that's like, so there's a big market because there's no one making it and no one's identified it. Okay, that is a very specific to you maybe bringing a little bit of knowledge that the local market doesn't have, 
and you, your, your audience is not the local market, yes, that kind of thing can potentially work, um, that, that, that knowledge process. But if you're coming down and going, you know what the, you know what the Nicaraguans need? Um, no, I don't know what they need, and neither do you. Right? There's, there's really no chance of that. That, that is such a ridiculous thing. They know what they need, right? Ask them. Don't try to tell them because that makes no sense. Because you don't know the market. You don't know what they have. You don't know what they need. You don't know what they're lacking. And uh, there's a dog sleeping on the ground here. He's so sleeping that even though I'm talking loudly and walking right next to him, he's not moving. So I was worried that he was like injured, but he's, he's seriously just asleep. Best to let sleeping dogs lie, I guess. Uh, so, so that is a starting point. Like, just don't try to solve problems that are not your problems. You don't know. And every business that tries to do that wildly fails. Right, now if you're trying to assist businesses that are here doing stuff, that's different. Um, but So the next thing is, is that people come down and just have these wild dreams. And I get it, right? You're coming to a new country, it's inspiring. You know, oh, I have fresh air. I'm in a new place. I, I come from a place where I felt stifled often, and now I don't. And so I'm really excited for, for completely legitimate reasons. And I want to take this energy and I want to turn it into projects. I want to turn it into all these different things. And, I, and I'm sure that I'm going to be able to just come up with some huge project or business or buenas tardes and, and do something amazing with it. And maybe it's a business, maybe it's a nonprofit, maybe it's just an interesting project. I'm gonna make some software, whatever. I'm gonna build a pro, I'm gonna do something. And, and then you get here and then over time, there's this reality that starts, I'm gonna spin the camera a little bit. This is a, we've shown this house before, but it was being built. This is all, this is all pretty new here. Hopefully the sunlight isn't completely blowing out the camera. It's so bright and I can't get the camera away from the sun. I'm looking where the shadows are and there's just nowhere I can go. But there we go. Now you should be able to see it a little bit. Now back in the sunlight. Ah, there's no way. There's just too much sun. And uh, so you, over time, you slowly get beaten down and often these projects become something you talk about. For whatever reason, there's a pattern to this. And so you have people who will be out there for years promoting these projects that they have, being like, yeah, I'm, in the, I'm building this thing, I'm doing this thing. And then you talk to their neighbors and they're like, yeah, seriously, they've been saying this for years. This is just something they say. This has, you know, they're, they're like known as the person who talks about this made up thing, completely discredits them. But you have to know them. If you don't know them and you meet them at the bar, They've got this rehearsed story and they talk about it and talk about it and talk about it. And so I, it's, like I said, it's a pattern. And they'll have this whole thing like, oh yeah, no, I've got this business and this plan and uh, I just need more investors, but it's been going great and we've been doing it for a long time. You find out they've been living off of retirement or something and they're not actually making any money and they're not actually doing the thing either, right? So often, it's gonna show, we've showed these as they're being built. They're uh, pretty far along at this point. I love this neighborhood. It is such a such a great neighborhood overall. Uh, and, and so it's like, it's nuts. But, but being here, so many people just feel like, oh, I can do this wild thing and I don't need to uh, actually have investors and I don't need to actually have a good idea. And I don't have to actually do my due diligence or, or come up with a viable business plan. And I don't actually have to get permission to do it. I don't have to get licenses. I don't need to get all this stuff that, you know, it's a normal business. You need to follow the rules like anywhere else. And uh, maybe the rules are a little bit simpler, but you still have rules. Um, and, uh, and, and then, and they just do nothing. Because so often there's something about living in, in paradise and it is very tranquilo Right, we talk about the Pura Vida in, in Costa Rica and people tend to just kind of be like, you know, chillax and, you know, enjoy life and, and, and don't worry. And we're not so Pura Vida as, as Costa Rica, but, but the, the concept is still there. We're still very laid back compared to uh, North America, for example. And, and so there's a very strong trend to be like, okay, I've got this dream and I've got this story and it sounds good and I love going places and telling people about my dreams and my thing and they get impressed, especially if they don't ask too many questions. They're like, that guy, man, he's building stuff, he's designing stuff, he's brilliant, he's probably rich. 
and you definitely meet people who are like, yep, I'm, I'm a billionaire and I'm, I'm looking to retire someplace interesting. And they'll go around and make up big stories and, and actually go and look at houses and pretend they might buy and all kinds of stuff. Like this stuff really happens. Uh, and, and of course it happens in, you know, the US or Canada too, but it's so much easier to tell when it's fake because it's just more by the book right here. Everybody's a bit, a bit eclectic. So it's really hard to tell when someone's like oddly eclectic or rich eclectic, right? I don't know. But once you get here and you're getting the benefit of the story, this, this seems to be the trend. You either, so this is not for the people who are, who are outright scamming you. That, they make money by like getting investors or something. So that's different or they hope to, or they hope to get people to buy their fake product that they never deliver, or, or it's just a not, not viable product. But when you have these people who are not really trying to fleece you, but are really excited about their thing that they're not really doing, <laughs> a lot of barking dogs and a gate opening, I just need to make sure that they're not coming after me. Uh, I think that a lot of people simply, they get the value out of this braggadocious activity of like, oh yeah, I built banking software and I have the most brilliant thing and no one can compete with me in Nicaragua. And you don't use that stuff. You have no way to know if that's real. You have no way to know if it's about to actually come out. You don't know if he has a team of 50 people around the corner or if he just made it all up. And you can tell uh, they just made it all up. Nobody has these big things here. It's a tiny market. The stuff, if it seems like, whoa, that's really impressive, chances are it's not real. It's all, it's so common. It's so crazy. It, it's, I, I just, I can't, I can't, right? I can't even, it's so nuts. But here's the problem, is that it's very likely to happen to you too. And that's where it gets really dangerous, is that there's something about Nicaragua that just causes people to have these feelings. Now, before we continue, I'm just gonna show this beautiful spot. And again, I don't have the lavalier, so I have to stop talking as I turn it around. But we're coming up for this, this nice walk. There is this triangle that, to the best of my knowledge, is available if someone wanted to build a house. But there is a, I think, new or, or modified uh, blue house with a tower over here. And I just want to show it as we walk by because it's pretty cool. So the danger to you, and this is very real, is twofold. One is that you're gonna to talk to these people and you're somehow gonna get swept up in their dreams and you're gonna make life decisions or some kind of large financial or otherwise time-consuming decision based on things that they've sold you that are probably untrue. And, and that could waste a whole bunch of your life. You may make really dangerous uh, moving decisions or any number of things based on these, what is that? Okay. Based on these, uh, these, these false dreams, these, these projects that are not actually being actioned or that have no plan or are not viable that they, that they convince you are. And that doesn't mean they're trying to scam you. It just means maybe they fooled themselves. They could be scamming you. Don't discredit that idea either. That happens a lot, but we, we wanna give some people the, the benefit of the doubt. And this is just, they, they got in over their head or they had no idea what they were doing and thought and this is the real danger because this can happen to you too and seems to happen to an outrageous number of people who something about living in the US or Canada or Western Europe, there is a pressure on you that says, ah, doing these projects is really hard and takes a lot of money. And you gotta have a lot of expertise and you gotta have experts who are helping you and you have to have all these resources. You've got to have a lawyer and an accountant and an engineer and a manager and a, just all these things. And that overhead of the US or wherever makes people go, oh no, I can't do that. I don't know anything about doing these things. I can't just, I can't just do that. But something about being in Nicaragua makes those same people who would never try something so wild or bold or foolish or reckless in the US or somewhere else, come down and instantly go, well, I know nothing about this market. I have no idea. I don't have any of the resources I had back home, but for some reason, now I'm infallible and I'm going to just go out and try, when I start this, try something completely crazy and completely reckless and just go with it. And, and all in, at least in how they present it. Very rarely do I find people who are investing their own money heavily in this or investing their own time that heavily. So often it's like, I'm gonna do this. And they just wait for, for someone to come along, give them a bunch of money and offer to do all the work. 
right? That, that's a trend. Uh, so you'll, you'll very often have this like story of, and they're like, well, I'm waiting for investors. And you're like, well, where's your money? You normally, when you're gonna get investors, you put money up first. Oh, well, well, they're kind of ignoring that that's how it works when you're getting investors, uh, under normal circumstances anyway. And uh, sorry, I'm really bright now, but we're at least heading in the right direction. And uh, so, so you got to watch out for these things, but it's going to potentially happen to you too. Something about the, the uh, lower cost of living, the tranquilo lifestyle, the a fresh air, the excitement of a new country, it does invigorate you. It does give you a lot of confidence. It does give you really cute dogs. Look at this tiny dog. He's so violent. You're so vicious. Salvaje. Um, and then this much larger dog who's just trotting by. He's like, nope, I don't want to get involved. You're so cute. And um, so you could take on a great risk. And, and this comes in two pieces as well. Part of that is you may be encouraged somehow through the air, the sunlight, the tranquilo, the live music, I don't know, to go out and do businesses that make no sense or projects that make no sense. And you'll become that person that's out there going, I make this incredible, I make spaceships in Nicaragua. And people will be like, you do? And then all you've got is a sketch. Something could make you be that person. But also you have the risk that you're going to encounter these people and they are gonna be genuinely excited about their, their fake project. All right, we gotta get past all this noise, it's too loud. But we got a beautiful plants over here and some horses coming by. So we'll give you some horses while we wait for the noise to die down. So there's a big risk that their excitement is going to rub off on you and you're going to hear about their dreams and feel their passion about it. And, and you know, they're excited. And their excitement can be infectious or convincing. And maybe they try to get you to invest or get involved or even do the project for them because they're not going to do it. Of course, that seems to be the trend. But it's, it's also that you may just get excited and volunteer. Be like, oh, this is, you've got such a, a crazy dream. This is amazing. I can't believe that you've managed to do all these things, which of course they generally haven't. And uh, then you get then you get swept along and maybe your money gets involved or maybe your time gets involved or, or maybe just your energy. But, so you need to be careful. You need to be careful that you don't become suddenly emboldened to be a crazy person and think that being smart and, and paying attention and using common sense don't, aren't necessary. But also don't assume everyone who tells you they have wild dreams and are doing amazing things, especially in Nicaragua, really are. Because very few people call them on their bluff. Very few people know how to. They're, you're surrounded by people who've recently moved. You're in a very different uh, uh, demographic than you were wherever you're coming from. And often people find that things that would, would never fly back back in the US, if you're in the US or Canada or whatever, and you said these things, people would instantly have all these questions. Really, how did you get around this regulation? How did you, how did you come up with funding of such magnitude or whatever? And it would be instant that they'd be like, oh, okay, no, I made it all up. But here, people don't know what you can do and can't do. And there's this, there's, it's so much harder to really figure out when it's real or not. Oh, we gotta wait for a tractor. It's so much harder to figure out what's real and what's not, what is possible and what isn't, that it's very hard to not just be like, well, I guess they figured things out. I don't know, they must, right? But chances are they don't, but you don't know. And then that lack of confidence makes it really easy to get people to, to be swept along. And so, and, and then when they do that, when this whole process happens, it actually makes it that they start to, in many cases, believe it themselves. And that's even more dangerous because if they believe it, then they're that much more likely to get you convinced because you can tell that they believe it. Well, if they believe it, but they believe it because you believed it, because other people believe that. They told a story, it flew, it's the Thomas Jefferson effect, right? Tell a story enough times, eventually you don't realize what's reality and what isn't. And that can be very dangerous, especially when we're talking about something that could involve your investment or whatever. And I'm gonna give a, a practical bit of advice at the end here. Like all of this is very, just be careful, watch out. Don't let yourself become swept along in your own made up dreams because you could easily be one of the people that caused this to happen. And watch out for this to happen with other people because once you move here, I guarantee after some amount of time, you're gonna be like, oh my gosh, Scott is right. This is a thing. Like people seriously just move here and in huge percentages think that they're going to just 
start some wild business, have some wild thing, things that, that it's, it's, you get so encouraged and emboldened to just be a, be, be a whack job and <laughs> think you can just do these crazy businesses and, and don't need to actually make money and don't need to, uh, don't need reality. There's no reality checks, right? The U.S., they will beat you down. Well, you made that up. That makes no sense. Don't stop telling this story. But here, there's those reality checks are rarely there. And people are just going to be like, oh, that's a cool story you got there. Neat. Right. And then you're just like, oh, I, I got away telling it one time. I'll tell it again. And soon you become known as that crazy person who constantly makes up these stories. But you don't realize that that's how people think of you. And you just keep going. But there's always new people. That's that's got to be part of the trick. There's always someone new who's just shown up, whether it's in a remote village or just coming to the country or they're uh, a tourist who's in and out. But you're constantly, especially if you're talking to the expats, always in a position of having fresh blood. So there's always someone who doesn't have your knowledge of your track record who may fall for your story and you get to sit around at the bar or find them at wherever. And find them online. The Facebook groups are big for this, right? And tell your story of all your dreams and all your stuff and they get excited. They're like, wow, really? That's so cool. And because they've got your attention, they get excited and it gives them, you know, their their dopamine kick. And so that's often the trend, right? And then when you're in the US or something, you're not finding new people all the time. You're in your community and your community has figured it out and you gotta, you'd have to move. But here people are just constantly moving in. And so you really do have a uh, flow in most of the country of, of fresh blood who's gonna come in and be like, I didn't know that they were crazy, how would I know? Well, you could guess, but if you don't know that this is a trend, you don't know. So a little bit of practical advice beyond that is specifically, if you're gonna find people who are kind of running, it could be a scam or it could be this, right? The, the 10 foot tall and bulletproof investor uh, is so many people come down and the one thing you can do with no knowledge, no money, no expertise is buy a large plot of land. So let's say uh, you're interested in, in just, you just want to have something really exciting to talk about. So if you're able to come up with somewhere between two and $10,000, say, which is a lot of money, but it's not a kind of money that people can't come up with. Certainly they can. Uh, so you come up with this amount of money. You can go anywhere in the country, more or less and buy one or two or three manzanas, which are about 1.7 acres each. So now you own a relatively large amount of land and you can subdivide that land, whether legally or not. I'm sure you can legally, but a lot of people will do it without doing anything legally. And then you can try to sell those subdivisions and you can make any grandiose plans, promises, whatever that you want. It is so cheap and has no expertise. Anybody can do it. Just buy some land, grab some chalk, draw some lines, and see if you can get people to give you money. Uh, and so unlike something where you're like starting a shop or need a website or have to do anything, you can just go on, have conversations on Facebook. And if you're having a conversation on Facebook, you already have kind of a captive audience of people who are in this kind of uh, 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 feedback loop social media circle. And you can be like, hey, I got this project, this is what I'm gonna do. A couple of people start talking and it's really easy to be like, oh, at a very affordable, oh, just give me X amount of money and you can get into this, into this thing. We've got this unique thing and it's nothing. You could just as easily go buy your own land two miles down the road, a hundred times of it for the same money and, and do the same thing, right? Like there's no, it's so the barrier to getting into that type of exciting project is so basically zero that it is very specifically a kind of thing you need to look out for. Um, and it is so common with the scams, the actual, pro, you know, pre-planned, orchestrated scams where they're really intending to do terrible things to you. Uh, the, the subdivisions have long been known as one of the standard scams here in Nicaragua because um, everybody goes out, you make a, a quick website, you buy a small amount of land, if you even do that at all, and you, you go out and just start telling uh, people about some some future that you've dreamed up and uh, there's no way to disprove it. Um, and uh, uh, people from abroad are very likely to pay five or 40 times the value of the land because it's not very high because you divided it into small pieces. They don't know that you spent 2000 for a whole piece of land and you're subdividing it and selling each subdivision for 10,000. Like you can make crazy money before anyone knows that you did literally nothing. And, uh, and then what are they gonna do? 
Did you really give a guarantee that you would do anything? And eh, maybe just skip the country. Like, what are they gonna do? Take your land? It's not worth anything, and you already sold a bunch of it anyway. So look out for anything that's using that mechanism. That specifically is extra dangerous and uh, very much a red flag. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. Just stop, step back, think, and say critically thinking, is this real? Could it be real? Does it make sense? Is this person really got the skills and knowledge and drive and energy and, and the honest intent to do all these things that they're excited about? Or are they just hoping to get a rise out of me, and uh, I don't want to end up falling for for that. Uh, just, just be aware, and don't become that person yourself. Be aware that there's something about Nicaragua that's very likely to make you feel this way, and that's a great feeling, but you don't want to let it go to your head and suddenly become this person who has these dreams that they can never fulfill, and I'm sure at the end of the day, you will not enjoy being that person, but in the meantime, sometimes it feels kind of good and gives you kind of that rush. Watch out for that. Uh, if you'd like to buy me a coffee to sponsor the channel, you can buy me a coffee at, I said that a lot, buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. That comes directly to me. Tell your friends about the show, post on social media. I will see all of you tomorrow.